What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sequence. This episode is brought to you by DraftKings. I am your host, Trevor Plouffe, and today we have a very, very special guest, all-star, World Series champ, my man, Philip Hughes. How are you? What's up, bro? Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm very excited to have you on. Obviously, we go way back. Um, you have had an incredible career. You hung them up. You started getting into the card collecting industry. What, what's it, what's the real term for that? Yeah, I mean card. Yeah, card game, card collecting industry, card industry. Yeah, yeah, you, a booming industry. I might add. Dude, you blown um, up. You, you've well, and, and not necessarily it. just from that standpoint, but um, yeah, I mean cards are coming back in a big way, and I mean this is a topic for a whole different discussion. But with sports kind of you know not being around these last few months. Uh, people are itching to gamble, as you know, and uh, cards are just a legal way of gambling. So uh, it's been a lot of fun, though. Yeah, your YouTube channel's blown up. It's Phil's Pools. We'll drop Phil's the Pools. Link. Yeah, uh, go check it out. You open a ton of um, higher end stuff, which is really cool to see. It really does give you that rush, a little bit of that gambling vibe. In fact, yeah, I'm sure. I'm joining you in a box war. Yeah. And yeah. Excited. Keep an eye out for that. Um, yeah, we got a, a 12 man box war, uh, current and former players, Trevor's in it. Um, Mike Trout, CC Sabathia, a rod. It's uh, it should be a lot of fun. It's insane. You've got incredible talent in there and then me. So I appreciate you, uh, extending the invite. <laughs> yeah. You and me just along for the ride. Me and me and Dan Heron are going head to head first round. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, it should be, it should be a lot of fun. But like I said, we've gone, we go back, we go way back. Um, Mm -hmm. Same draft class. 2004, uh, we came up. Same agent. Same agent. Yep. Yeah. And then. Played together for a few years. You're the star in the Yankees org coming up. You make it to the big leagues at 20 years old. Then you're part of a World Series uh, title run in 09. We end up playing together. Um, You're well-traveled and... We the one season that I'll always remember is 2014, and you were absolutely lights out that year. And it was you were one of the guys I loved to play behind because of the way you approached it. Like you just threw strikes and you kept everybody on your toes. And as a defender, any defender out there knows like that. That's those are the guys you want to play behind. So I appreciate that. Yeah, well, especially in a year like that where we were absolutely miserable. Um, you wanted those games to go by as quickly as possible. So <laughs> we, we that's what I was trying to do. <laughs> we were that's pretty what I bad. To. I think it was not, do we lose 90 games that year? But you set, yeah, maybe, maybe not 90, but you set that year, you set the, uh, the strikeout to walk ratio uh, for all of MLB or just for the AL? Uh, single season all the time. Yeah. In- incredible. And it, and it felt like that. Like it felt like you turbocharged through the lineups every game. So, Let's get into the video. Uh, Before we do, here's the ad read. Grab your peanuts and popcorn. Baseball is back. That's right. The boys will be getting back out on the diamond. And while we may not be able to join them in the stadium, there's plenty of action to be had from the comfort of your home. There's no better place to get in on the action than with DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app. To celebrate baseball coming back, DraftKings Sportsbook is offering free bets for every home run your team hits. Taking advantage of this Grand Slam offer is easy. All you have to do is place a pregame bet of at least $25 on your home team, and for every home run they hit in that game, you get $5 worth of free bets. Bet the team. They hit the home runs. Double down. We get more money. I like it. Additionally, DraftKings Sportsbook is offering all new users a sign-up bonus up to $1,000. Anything for free is for me. I like that offer. Don't worry if baseball isn't your game. DraftKings offers great odds and promotions on all sports ranging from ping pong to basketball. If you want to bet ping pong, you can do it. DraftKings Sportsbook is U.S. based, making it safe, secure, and reliable. Gotta love that. Plus, it's easy to deposit and withdraw your funds whenever you want, which is a huge thing. All the books want to take your money. Are they going to give you your money when you want it? DraftKings will. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code JOMBOY when you sign up. 
For a limited time, all new users get a sign-up bonus up to $1,000. That's code JOMBOY, J-O-M-B-O-Y, to get your sign-up bonus up to $1,000. Only a DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older, New Jersey only. Bonus compromise of a first deposit bonus and a first bet match, each up to $500. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, Phil, we got the video keyed up. We see your stats right there, 5-3 and three with a 3-3-3. Three, three, three. And I think towards the end of this year, you're like, you're like going. Like you're hot. So these numbers are on their way down. Do you remember feeling locked in? Yeah, um, yeah this was kind of like in the middle um, of my bullpen run. Uh, a big chunk of that ERA was was out of the – was starting. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think for – I forget how long it was, but there was a six-week to two-month period where I think I had like a sub one. Um, and then this was kind of – this was kind of right in the middle of that. So this is – I was feeling – I was feeling really good. I, I was already pitching the eighth inning where when I went down there, I was the long guy. Um, so I was like a one, I was like a one inning four out guy at this point. And, um, yeah, the Yankees were, we were rolling at this point. We were winning a bunch of games and close games. And this is, uh, yeah, this is one of them. This is, uh, a cool at bat because it's another guy that we both played with Jim Tomei, who's a legend. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I always tell people like this guy, he was like a, superhuman like big person like just he looked different than other people and i think you can kind of see it when you look at him yeah walk, so no for sure he's yeah he's one of the best ever uh, right, here we go. and this was this was a big uh inning for me just because uh you know i'm facing i had the meat in this inning you know a lot of times you want your closer to face you know the best parts of the lineup but in the eighth year i had tommy Conurco, jermaine die so yeah there it is right there tommy is having a rough day <laughs> if, I mean, yeah. maybe jim went out for a little uh, steak and some some adult beverages yeah, yeah i don't know who that. started this game for us but they uh they pitched pretty well because i think it's a i think it was what a 2-2 game yeah, and the eighth i think it was a tie game so gordon beckham i think he's like fresh off winning rookie of the year or something like that uh-huh yeah he was he was the guy carlos quentin alex rios yeah pretty good lineup yeah but we got big jim coming up here Intimidating in the box. Uh huh. Look at him. First pitch is. So I try to go heater in, miss up. It's a good place. It's a good place for to go with him, and it always was. I mean, just that, um, you know, hard in under his hands. Don't let him get those big hairy forearms extended. You know. I gotta say, you could have got a strike there, but this is Jim Tomey. At the plate. And I did, that's one of those. Yeah, that's one of those pitches I don't want. <laughs> Probably not one I'm going to get either. Yeah. But. Uh, All right. And I look at your setting up away. So just trying to steal a strike, get back in the count. A um, little fastball down and away. Um, kind of a weird swing there for, you know, a 1-0 count. He's probably hot in a heater. Um, and it's actually, it looks like he was almost a little out in front of that. And took a fastball kind of, you know, mid away and banged it into his shin. He doesn't look like seeing of, the ball very well. Look right there. He's in between. Nah. Well, judging, yeah, judging by the 0 for 3 or 3 punches, he's probably not feeling that great at the plate at this particular moment. So I did and that maybe was, get a little get a little fortunate there. Yeah, and that was dotted, though. That was down in the way. You hit your spot. Yeah, it was, it was a good pitch. Now you go 1-1. One, one. So here we're going back in, and I just miss uh, with a cutter that just spun um, cement mixer cutter Ooh. that just ran right down the middle and he probably was like, what on earth was that? <laughs> Man, <laughs> we talk about that as hitters. Like sometimes the backup slider is the hardest pitch. You expect it to break, it doesn't. And then you're sitting there, yeah. like, wow, I should have killed that pitch, but I did it. Right. And he could probably, I mean, I don't know how much these guys peak and stuff like that, but you can feel when a guy's coming into you, I bet. And, um, you know, he was probably looking for something in and just got a cement mixer right down the middle. And um, unfortunately for Jim, he needed to take advantage of that because, um, yeah, he wasn't getting a, another mistake like that on two strikes. <laughs> well, it's interesting because so you started that heater away. He saw like he saw it. He saw your fastball, and then you mm-hmm. came back with another one, and he was kind of in between, a little late. And then you go ahead and throw him the cement mixer away, and he swings through it. So to, now, if I'm Jim, I'm like I don't know what's coming. Right. Like you know. He, and what's funny is, you know, 
two of the three pitches were misses and the intent was off on all of them. So I finally execute a pitch and yeah, it's, well, we'll see, we'll see what happens. So, yeah, I mean, you're, you've been trying to go in this entire bat kind of been missing arm side and yeah. here's your, here's your correction. Pitch. And what's funny about this too. So, uh, Posada caught, you know, 90% of the games, but here it's Jose Molina. Okay. And, um, Posada was more had a tendency to like wanting to just go with what was working. Whereas Molina kind of did this, this thing where he wanted you to execute the pitch that you were struggling with. And he wanted you to like find that. So like normally in this situation, I would just, I would just try to blow heaters. Um, but he, but because I had missed with that cutter so badly, he wanted me to come back to it. Um, Interesting. So yeah, he was, he was interesting in that way. Yeah, and and now I'm I'm wondering like if Jim probably it kind of looks like Jim was up there maybe looking to pull the ball, right? And, and got well with that short porch right there, and, you know what lefty isn't, you know. And now uh, you're showing him away on accident, and uh, you've kind of <laughs> right. you've, you've opened up the inside part of the plate. Sure. Molina can steal strikes too, by the way. Oh yeah, especially oh, downs. His hand, yeah, his hands were unreal. All right, so we go back in, execute a heater in 94. So that was probably the pitch that set up um, yes. everything in this at bat because he, he saw the cement mixer out over the plate. And then I finally got in on him um, to speed him up a little bit. And uh, even though he fouls it off, pitch. like I kind of, it kind of did everything I needed it to do. You know what I mean? Like I would have loved if he swung through it. Like, yeah. you know, I'll take that. But um, now I could go back down away. I could probably bury a, a curveball. Like it just opens so many other things up for me. Yeah, and whether I was located, even if he puts the barrel on it, he's pulling it foul. You know, yeah, there's not much you can do with that great, pitch, great unless you're, pitch. you know, unless you're Joey Votto or some mutant. <laughs> and there he is. That's just how I remember you, like facing you right there. <laughs> All right. I, I'm, I'm shocked that we're not going over uh, that bat I had against you, but. <laughs> this is successes only, baby. <laughs> All right. Well, like you said, you opened up every part of the plate. There's jo- yeah, Joba. I could basically. Joba, Joba or Jabba? Jabba. I feel like yeah, I always call him Joba. Is. All right. Yeah. I like Joba. He may he may have started this game, to be honest with you. Um, there, let's go back and watch that again. Yeah. Nasty so this is this is what I called my cutter. Basically, the exact same pitch that ran out over the plate the first time. And... It, it has like depth, you know, it, it wasn't, it wasn't like the cutter that, uh, um, that I threw later in my career, but, um, yeah, you know, it was just kind of 88. He kind of just, you know, looked like a fastball coming in, just, you know, kind of bit a little bit down. And, um, I mean, you're looking, yeah, that looks oh. like a fastball in and, and yeah, Jim was, way. uh, Jim with the, uh, what, what do you call that? Golden sombrero. The golden this is a great yeah, well, here. You just, you tied him up, man. Yeah. Well, he's, he's looking for that same fastball in. And then by the time he realized that it was, you know, breaking, it's too late. You know, I want to go over so. the slow mos one more time. Yeah. We love Jim. We love, we love, love Jim. Jim's, Jim's the best. Jim. Yeah. Tough. Life. It was, it was a, <laughs> and I almost feel bad picking on him. Like I wish we would, we could have picked out no, somebody better, this but is, this is that great. was, that was a good example of an at bat where not everything goes right the entire way. And if you miss one mistake, it can, you're, you're done. You know, you um, unintentionally opened up that part of the plate by missing arm side a few times. Right. Right. And then you, which then is, you which is funny push. because, you know, pitchers will say, Oh, you know, I only made two mistakes tonight and it cost me bullshit. <laughs> like, <laughs> Any given night, pitchers are making 40% mistakes. It's just all about how many are capitalized on. So, oh, man. And velo helps. And that's why, you know, those velo, those mistakes are, they can be missed still. Yeah. And that's yeah, velo, uh, velo helps everything. You know, if you're a low velo guy, you have to make less mistakes than, you know, a guy that throws 100. And I mean, there's all sorts of different aspects to it, whether it's, you know, life on the fastball and, oh, this guy's 93, looks like 96. And, you know, all that other stuff that's involved. But if you have a fastball that gets on guys, it, uh, it makes life a lot easier. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you coming on, sharing your insight, uh, follow Phil's polls, subscribe, like all that good stuff. Heck yeah. Uh, we're going to have him back for a bat number two. So 
check it out. Sweet. Thanks, man.